Story six of The Bet and Other Stories by Anton Chekhov. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Story six That Wretched Boy Ivan Avinitch Lapkin, a pleasant looking young man, and Anna Zablitsky, a young girl with a little snub nose, walked down the sloping bank and sat down on the bench. The bench was close to the water's edge among thick bushes of young willow, a heavenly spot you sat down and you were hidden from the world only the fish could see you and the cat's paws which flashed over the water like lightning the two young persons were equipped with rods fish hooks bags tins of worms and everything else necessary once seated they immediately began to fish i am glad that we're left alone at last said lapkin looking around i've got a lot to tell you anna tremendous when i saw you for the first time oh you've got a nibble i understood then why i am alive i knew where my idol was to whom i can devote my honest hard-working life it oh it must be a big one it is biting when i saw you for the first time in my life i fell in love fell in love passionately uh, don't pull let it go on biting uh, tell me darling uh, tell me w will you let me hope no i'm not worth it i dare not even think of it may i hope for pull anna lifted her hand that held the rod pulled cried out a silvery green fish shone in the air goodness it's a perch help quick it's slipping off the perch tore itself from the hook danced in the grass towards its native element and leaped into the water but instead of the little fish that he was chasing, Lapkin, quite by accident, caught hold of Anna's hand, quite by accident, pressed it to his lips. She drew back, but it was too late. Quite by accident, their lips met and kissed. Yes, it was an absolute accident. They kissed and kissed. Then came vows and assurances, blissful moments but there is no such thing as absolute happiness in this life if happiness itself does not contain a poison poison will enter in from without which happened this time suddenly while the two were kissing a laugh was heard they looked at the river and were paralyzed the schoolboy kolia anna's brother was standing in the water watching the young people and maliciously laughing ha <laughs> ha kissing said he right oh i'll tell mother i hope that you as a man of honour lapkin muttered blushing it's disgusting to spy on us it's loathsome to tell tales it's rotten as a man of honour give me a shilling then i'll shut up the man of honour retorted if you don't i'll tell lapkin took a shilling out of his pocket and gave it to kolya who squeezed it in his wet fist whistled and swam away and the young people did not kiss any more just then next day lapkin brought kolya some paints and a ball from town and his sister gave him all her empty pill-boxes then they had to present him with a set of studs like dogs heads the wretched boy enjoyed this game immensely and to keep it going he began to spy on them wherever lapkin and anna went he was there too he did not leave them alone for a single moment beast lapkin gnashed his teeth so young and yet such a full-fledged scoundrel what on earth will become of him later during the whole of july the poor lovers had no life apart from him he threatened to tell on them he dogged them and demanded more presents nothing satisfied him finally he hinted at a gold watch all right they had to promise the watch once at table when biscuits were being handed round he burst out laughing and said to lapkin shall i let on ah. <laughs> lapkin blushed fearfully and instead of a biscuit he began to chew his table napkin anna jumped up from the table and rushed out of the room and this state of things went on until the end of august up to the day when lapkin at last proposed to anna ah what a happy day that was when he had spoken to her parents and obtained their consent lapkin rushed into the garden after kolia 
when he found him he nearly cried for joy and caught hold of the wretched boy by the ear anna who was also looking for kolia came running up and grabbed him by the other ear you should have seen the happiness depicted on their faces while kolia roared and begged them darling precious pets i won't do it again oh, oh forgive me and both of them confessed afterwards that during all the time they were in love with each other they never experienced such happiness such overwhelming joy as during those moments when they pulled the wretched boy's ears End of story six.